telling you. That's the way, you see, the, 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 it's not a formula. It's a transaction that's spiritual. And the more you want to be like him and be conformed to his image, and you are sincere about that confirmation, the more he's willing to work on you. Yes. That's number one. You're going to love like him and love your wife? You've got to place her needs above your own. Secondly, the husband's authority is never used to please himself. But only to serve the interests of his wife. Oh, I'm going to need some help here today. Amen. The husband's authority is never used to please the man. You find me one time in the Holy Scriptures where Jesus used his authority for himself. You find, you go and find it. Go and find it. Even when they wanted to make him king, although if Jesus had come to Atlanta, he would have succeeded in that area, but even when they wanted to make him king, The Pope said, that's low, so I have to repent. I repent. <laughs> Even when they wanted to make him king, he didn't do it. He didn't accept it. They call him good. He said, no, only one is good. The father. He never used his authority for himself. Otherwise, he would never have been hungry. He would never have been tired. He allowed himself to experience all those human emotions because he recognized it's not about him but about his father Amen. folks we may not do it but I'm going to tell you the truth the husband's authority is not about pleasing himself it should always be to serve the interest of his wife that's why you need to marry right don't get married now and start telling me, well, you just don't know my wife. No, I don't know your wife. <laughs> but you are in it. <laughs> and it's a love sentence. Love sentence. You are not getting out of it. It's a love sentence. Amen? Now, do you guys want me to stop now and just stop? Or you want me to finish this? Pardon me? The sacrifice you and I are called to make as husbands should never stop even when disagree. The sacrifices that God has called upon us to make for our wives should never stop even when we disagree. <laughs> Man, are you alright? It should never stop. In other words, our sacrifices should not be contingent on that, the fact that we are, uh, agree with what she's saying. No. No. Never. You shouldn't. And young men, you're not married yet. You need to hear what I'm saying. Because this is what's going to be expected of you when you get married. This is the good news for us men. A secure wife will do anything for her husband. A secure wife. A secure wife will do absolutely anything for a husband. While an insecure wife will feel she has to take care of her own needs. And that's where trouble starts. Now, I'm going to close by giving you a contrast from the scriptures to close this part of the message out. So let me just, let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. This is huge. Ah, thank you for allowing me a few extra time here. I do appreciate that. Genesis chapter 12. Look at verse 11. And it came to pass when it was close to entering Egypt that he said to Sarai his wife, Indeed I know you are a woman of beautiful countenance. 
Therefore, it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, this is his wife. And they will kill me, but let you live. So Abraham, okay, if they kill you and let her live, is there a problem with that? I mean, so, so Abraham, what do you think if she, she, her living is a problem? Well, I mean, just follow the thinking here. Okay? So verse 13, please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake that I may live because of you. So it was when Abraham came into Egypt and that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful, the princess of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. Now, did you see what this man did? He exposed his wife to protect himself. You're not hearing me. He willingly, in fact, What's what they use in law? Premeditated. The exposure of his wife to danger yeah. before danger ever occurred. Now, thank God for Abraham. We know he's a father of faith and so forth and so on, but at this point, he was definitely not a father of faith. <laughs> These guys said to his wife, You know, we're going to Egypt. I don't, those guys, I don't trust them. I need to save my own skin, but we expose yours. He was willing to expose his wife to Pharaoh and his cohorts. Yeah. Don't care what they do with her as long as he just lives. Is that the husband? Terrible. He exposed his wife to protect himself. Is that what you are doing? That's not the kind of husband that God will honor. Oh, that's deep. I never saw that until yesterday. Or Friday. Friday. Deep. That's deep. God wrote that in the Bible so you can, and I will see that. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Contrast that with Matthew chapter 1. And this is the last and final closing. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Oh my God. Do you see the contrast? Joseph was in a tight situation. His wife is pregnant. A ridicule in the entire country. But he had enough justice in him, enough honor in him, enough dignity in him to know that this is my wife. Even though what's happening, I don't understand it, I'm going to protect her. So he said, you know what? I will expose myself and protect her rather than do what Abraham did. Young girls, this is the kind of man you want to marry. I don't care how silver his tongue is. I don't care how much money he has in his bank account. If he cannot protect you at the expense of exposing himself, run away from him. Amen. So this afternoon as we close and we're ready to pray now, what kind of a man are you? Are you the man that will protect yourself, your own interest, and expose your wife? Now, that may be you when you came in here, and that's fine. The issue, the reason we're here today is to pray. If in any of the areas I talked about, your finance, your interest, your relationship, your schedules, and even trouble, if you say, Pastor, God is not forcing those areas, I want to pray for you now. I want to have an altar call. If you say, Pastor, I am not a husband that God has called me to be. God is still helping me, but I want prayer. I want prayer. I want God to finish the work he started on me. I want to be the kind of man that God will be proud of. If that is you, come to this altar right now. This is the beginning of manhood. The ability to say, you know what, God? I need you to help me. That's where it starts. We're going to pray for ourselves. Me inclusive. This is where it starts. This is what God is looking for. Men that he can extend and expand his grace upon and just 
and just bless so that we can go into the world and be the example of godly husbands in the rest of the world. Thank you so much for coming. And we all understand we're all working progress. All of us. We just want the best. We just want God's best. Oh, I don't want anything less than that. If Jesus went to the cross to bring the best to us, I don't want any less than that. And I believe that's your heart cry this afternoon as well. That's my heart cry. So, Father, on behalf of all the men that are standing here before you, first and foremost, I want to give you thanks because no greater love can anyone have but that you lay down your life for us. We do not take that lightly. We thank you for loving us so much. You give your life for us. And so here we are. The recipients of your love this afternoon. We thank you for the love wherein you've loved us. And now I pray by the power of your spirit. That that love of God become shed abroad in our hearts. By the power of your spirit. Mighty Holy Spirit. We know it is unnatural for us to love us. You love. We are mortals, we are humans. But we also recognize that with you and by your spirit, you can make a change in us. So God, I pray this afternoon, create in us a new heart. And renew within us the right spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, let no man leave this altar the same way as he came. My Lord and my God, let your finger begin a surgical operation in every one of us, me inclusive, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your change begin in our hearts, the way we perceive you. And God, out of that dealing, let us go to our homes and become great examples of love to our wives our children, our neighbors, our co-workers, everywhere we, where you send us, let the fragrance of your love become dispensed in and through us. Yes, yes. 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 Lord, we overcome every vulnerability, every fear, every intimidation. My Lord and God in Jesus' name, we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation, unto deliverance. And so, Lord God, we have been delivered now from every single problem, every single fear, every single intimidation. We receive deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. We choose to be the man you raise us to be. Yes. We choose the, to be the man that you want us to be, Lord. Yes, we desire everything you have for us, my Lord and my God. Father, thank you, Lord. I pray for our homes. God, you know every home right here at this altar. You know the changes that need to take place. Lord, we are taking initiative. We as your men will take initiative yes. that the change will begin with us. Yes. God, that every home that needs to be mended, that needs to be adjusted, that needs to be reconciled, yes. that needs to be restored. My Father, in the name of Jesus, as we have taken this stand today, yes. change our homes, restore our homes, reconcile us back to our wives. Father, in the name of Jesus, every trick of the enemy Jesus. to discourage us, to despise our wives, our partners. Father, I cancel that right now. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every counsel of the devil to destroy, to sow strife and discord in our homes. Father, in the name of Jesus, it shall not prosper. In the name of Jesus, we cancel every argument. We cancel every controversy. In the name of Jesus, we open the heavens of our homes. My Lord and my God, your peace will abide in our home. Yes. Your joy will abide in our home. The life of God will go for out of our houses. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for restoration. And Lord, the days that we have lost, the days that the canter, caterpillar, canter woman, palmer woman has eaten, we pray for restoration. Restore that which was taken. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. We bless you now. We praise your name forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may return to your seats. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen.